It's been a little while, and that's okay. This video is about dealing with small surface mount BGA components, and I figured I would make this video in case anyone else was having issues like I used to have. So we have a defective BGA component. It's a two by three uh, ball grid array, and you can't really see it right now, but uh, this chip is ruined. So the first thing we're going to do is just remove it, and then we'll talk about the replacement. And I'm using hot air, and this hot air is at 381 Celsius at full air speed. And I'm just going to move my camera over a little bit. It's just a little desktop microscope. I'm just going to warm the area, keep the hot air kind of in place. I'm going to reach my tweezers in and just kind of focus my hot air on this chip being careful of that resistor removed the dud chip so there's a couple things we could do now we could go in with wick and hot air to remove the old solder but I think what I'm going to do is use an iron with a, with a knife tip so this is how the big the tip of my iron is and I'm gonna take some liquid flux this is just the flux type says RMA223. It's just some stuff from China, of course. I'm just going to put some flux down. And my iron temperature is at 380 Celsius, just like the hot air. Kind of a magic number. I have some leaded solder. And I'm going to use just the tip of my iron. I'm going to coat these pads. And usually these replacement chips will have solder on them already, ready to go, the little solder balls, so you're not having to re-ball anything. But just know that it's kind of a one-time thing. If you, if you make a mistake, you basically are done with that chip, unless you're going to try to re-ball it, which I'm going to try to not do. So let me now get a little piece of wick. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just snip some off with some flush cutters so I can come in with my tweezers. Kind of like this. And try to get just the solder. Doesn't have to be perfect, but should be good enough. This iron is a pine sole, by the way. I can see I'm scraping some of the mask away there. That's okay. And now what I will do is I will take a Q-tip with some 70% IPA, which is pretty commonly available. And I know I haven't talked a lot about technique, but that's going to come up. Hope you could see some of the technique in terms of cleaning very small, precise areas where I'm using the tweezers to hold the um, braid instead of trying to come in with the whole reel. You know, the other part of uh, the benefit there is that it's able to conduct heat easier when you're using a small snippet rather than the entire reel attached. So that's looking good. <clears throat> now I'm going to get my replacement component. It's still on a tape reel. So looks like that. You can see kind of there's a small dot indicating the position. So I will try 
to maintain the orientation. But it won't matter too much. I'm just going to flick it out onto my work mat and then try to not lose it. Let's go ahead and put it in the frame. And I can see the dot is this way. And now, here's the important part, the technique. I'm going to squeeze out some flux just a little bit, just like that. I'm going to take my component. I'm going to flip it on its side like this with the solder balls facing the paste. I'm going to apply the paste to the bottom. And now, make sure I have the orientation correct. I can see the dot. It goes this way. I put the component down. The hard part's done. I'm going to gently move this into place with my tweezers and I'm just going to take my time. And doesn't have to be perfect, but closer you get this to perfect during this part, the easier time you'll have. We'll start there. And now, one more thing before I put the hot air in. When I'm doing the hot air, I am looking at the component, but I'm also looking at the components around. I'm using that as kind of a heat indicator to know when the solder has been melted. Uh, if you watch closely to this pad or this pad that I'm pointing to with my tweezers, you'll see the solder kind of go molten. And that'll be an indication that the solder balls have melted. So I'm going to come in starting far away and moving a little closer and you might see the component kind of snap into place a little bit as well should be pretty quick it has moved I'm watching those other components I think they have already molten I have not been paying very good attention, kind of distracted. Let me move my hot air away. Okay, yeah, they definitely did go molten. And that should be it. I'm just gonna let this cool for a second because putting current through a component that is hot can lead to it just being destroyed because there's basically no resistance in some of those elements when they get hot. Uh, another thing I notice is this component over here. This is just bugging me. These capacitors don't really seem very well flowed. So let me just uh, maybe it's fine, but it's bugging me. Anyways, I'm going to leave that alone now. Let's get back to our main component. My little distracted brain. Try not to get too distracted. Just going to roll over this. Clean up any extra flux. This has been the best way that I found to do it where I'm not getting flux all over the board. 
and this should work with just about any size of BGA component. Dry it off the other side with this cotton swab. I mean, it looks looks okay. Let me go over that with alcohol one more time. Gotta kind of saturate it. And I believe that's the right orientation. I see the dot it's subtle, but I do see it. Yep, and that's aligned correctly. Let me just try out the alcohol with the hot air. And now I'm going to go ahead and test. It's a USB-C port and there's some LEDs. The LED should light up. Hope everything is working like I'm expecting it to. There it is. Okay, so that's a fix. Hope that helps you with any BGA stuff that you're working on. Where'd I go? There it is. Thanks for watching.